This is my wife's 2017 Chevrolet Bolt EV in Premier trim. It is our go-to car for round town errands. It's got about 130-ish thousand miles on the clock. We purchased it used when it was just three years old and since then it's been my wife's main car and our round town runabout. Yes, we do have the F-150 Lightning but we tend to use that less because this is smaller, it's more efficient, it's easier to park and frankly, this is a whole lot more fun on the road down to the valley from where I live in the foothills of the coast range. But at the end of last year, I made some tweaks to this car. I added a new front grille because the old one was damaged when I hit a bird driving locally one day. I also added some new hydraulic struts so I don't have to use the prop anymore. And we also added a lithium iron phosphate 12 volt starter battery courtesy of Omu. Now, it's been a while since that battery was installed. We also installed a similar battery in our F-150 Lightning. So today it's time to answer the question, how is that starter battery doing? Was it worth the extra money? And what happened with the F-150 Lightning? Because I did drop a few hints in previous videos that that battery wasn't doing so great. Omu have been around for a number of years and they sent us not one, not two, but three batteries to test out in our various vehicles. Now, one of them is destined for Cape Mon Elliott's Morris Minor as its 12 volt starter battery. So that battery has been sat in storage and I'm happy to report that it's doing just fine. I checked on it earlier today. It's only done one full charge discharge cycle, which is what I expected it would have done. And the battery voltage is fine and all of the cells inside it are fine. How do I know that? Well, if you buy the lithium iron phosphate version of the Omu batteries, you get an onboard battery management system with a little Bluetooth chip inside it. And that allows you to keep track of the battery on the car. Now, this car also has a lithium iron phosphate battery. Obviously, lithium iron phosphate is a lot lighter than lead acid batteries and perfectly suited for life in an EV. As we've noted in previous videos on the channel, heavy lead acid batteries, while they have a great amount of capacity for cranking over an internal combustion engine, don't really like life in EVs. They're not really designed for EV use. Yes, you could put a deep cycle battery in, but even then they're not really designed for the purpose of a 12 volt starter battery in an EV. And that is effectively to just turn on the 12 volt power electronics and be powerful enough to engage the main contactors on the battery pack, at which point the car's main traction battery powers the car's DC to DC converter, which then feeds all of those 12 volt systems on your vehicle with the necessary 12 volts. I should point out here that not all cars have a 12 volt battery and some EVs are on the market with DC to DC converters and maybe an ultra capacitor or a super capacitor or some other small circuit that powers on when you turn the car on just long enough for the DC to DC to kick in. My Vectrex VX1 goes one step further. It has a permanent 12 volt live connection but doesn't have a 12 volt battery system. That means that my bike slowly discharges its traction battery pack if I leave it for long periods of time, which I'll admit is a bit of a design flaw, but in a conventional EV like the Chevrolet Bolt, it's all down to the 12 volt battery. And if the 12 volt battery doesn't work, the car won't turn on. That is, by the way, why I recommend that all EV owners carry a small lithium based jump starter. So if their main 12 volt battery dies, they can still power their car up and make it to wherever they're going. So the Omu battery that I've got in this car has a BMS system that I can connect my phone to. And right now it's telling me that the battery inside my Bolt is doing just fine. It's in great condition. It's 
done 20 cycles and uh, the voltage is about 13 volts which is exactly where I want it to be right now for some reason it keeps disconnecting and trying to go to the other battery which is just off camera that's a me problem not a battery problem but the nice thing about having this BMS is that it tells me if there is a problem with the individual cells within the battery because this is a 12 volt battery, it's actually made up of four lithium iron phosphate cell groups that combined give you the necessary voltage you need to operate the car. Now, considering that this car's battery has been in for about half a year, 20 cycles is about right. That obviously takes into consideration the driving that we've been using, the periods it sat on its own. It has a built-in heating system, so it ensures that the lithium iron phosphate battery stays warm enough when the temperature outside gets super low. Now, to be clear, we didn't have much in the way of cold weather last winter after the battery went in. We had a couple of days of snow, but nothing super, super cold. So I can't speak to how this performs in well below freezing temperatures. I didn't go up into the mountains or to the ski resorts or anything this past winter. So it's really based on what happened here and the car behaved itself. I haven't had any issues with it starting up. It hasn't given me any low battery warnings. And just like every other Chevrolet Bolt, the only thing that I am frustrated about, other than the slow DC uh, fast charging capability, is the fact that if you leave this car parked for more than about four days, the car's onboard modem goes to sleep, which then means if you want to use OnStar to start, unlock, or access the car's systems in any way, you have to walk outside, physically unlock it, wake the car up by turning it on, and then you can use telematics again. But that seems to be a problem that it's not just Chevrolet, it seems to be a whole problem industry-wide. And the F-150 has been doing it too. While I'm here, these struts have been phenomenal. There's no wear or tear that I can tell noticeably. Obviously, I don't lift this a huge amount because there's not a lot going on under the hood, but I am quite fastidious about topping up the windscreen washer. So I access this a couple of times a month just to top it off and also encourage the local squirrels and rodents who like to make nests on top of the warm charger and inverter box to not do that. So far, so good. There's nothing else really to complain about with this car. It's worked incredibly well. We've had no issues. And yes, for those who are worrying, I haven't made a video yet about replacing the center touch screen. My wife is nagging me to do that because this car's center touch screen is just getting worse and worse. It's a known problem with this particular model year of Chevrolet Bolt EV and my own Chevrolet Bolt EV, the red one that I owned from new until I bought the F-150 Lightning, had the same problem. It's a, it's a, a weak spot in that car's hardware. Let's talk about the F-150 though, because things there, not so good. I'm now in front of my Ford F-150 Lightning and this is the battery that was put in that truck. You can tell it's no longer in the truck and I'm about to tell you why. But first, I want to acknowledge that this truck is parked in front of the chicken coop, which is where it lives, it's where it charges. It has to live here because if I park it further away, then the Ford Home Integration System doesn't actually work because it can't talk to the truck properly. And that is Charlie. Uh, a testament that, yes, indeed, Charlie. That is Charlie, my rooster, who is very loud and obnoxious and a little bit of a dick. And I'm parked right in front of him. So he may be quite vocal during this filming. Sometimes he's quiet. Sometimes he just likes the sound of his own voice. So as expeditiously as possible, let's explain why this battery is no longer in my F-150 Lightning. So I replaced the battery, and in that original video, I explained that the 12 volt battery that came with the truck from the factory was on its way out. It was not storing a charge properly. It was starting to show issues when I turned the truck on. It would say that it was in battery saver mode, which it only ever does if there is an issue with the state of charge of that 12 volt battery pack. And indeed, it was getting worse. Now, it turns out that there was a bug in the 12 volt battery management system on this truck. 
It was a problem across all similar model years of the F-150 Lightning, and Ford fixed it with an over-the-air update. Unfortunately, because I opted to replace the original outgoing 12 volt battery with this one, and I didn't go to my local dealership and make a warranty claim, when this battery died, Ford turned around and went, well, you fitted a non-standard part, so we're gonna charge you out of warranty to diagnose and replace with a like-for-like -like lead acid battery, similar to the one that the truck had when it was brand new. And that cost me about $400. So the moral of the story is, if your car is still in warranty or your truck is still in warranty, and you have a problem with the starter battery, the 12 volt battery, whatever you want to call it, take it back to the dealership and demand a replacement under warranty. I feel stupid that I didn't do that, but I have learned my lesson. So why did this battery die? Well, the 12 volt battery management system in the F-150 Lightning and a lot of modern cars keeps track of the state of health of your starter battery. And as the starter battery ages and it loses its capacity, the vehicle responds by logging how much energy can be put in and out of the battery. And I believe, and don't quote me on this, it tracks that energy usage so that when your vehicle is running and it's trying to charge that battery back up, it does energy counting in and out to figure out how much energy can be safely stored without pushing that battery to a point where it might suddenly off gas or go too high voltage, which are problems with traditional 12 volt batteries. The problem is that when I put this battery in, I didn't tell the onboard computer that I had replaced the battery. And so the truck assumed that this was the old battery which was on its way out and it didn't charge or discharge the battery properly and that resulted in it killing this battery in about four months. Normally this truck sits here and is used for filming and hauling and other farm related things in addition to its duties at TE. But that particular week, my wife had borrowed it to travel up to a client north of Seattle. And because the weather wasn't great, and because this truck has a longer range than her Bolt EV, we'd swapped cars for the week and she'd taken the F-150 Lightning. She rang me on her way home after she'd been up in Seattle all week, um, after she'd been at the client site, you know, east of Seattle, She'd had the truck plugged in at a charging station while she was at the hotel and had charged it back up and it was fine, but she got in it to go home and it gave her the low battery warning. It let her turn the truck on and then she started driving home. Now about halfway home, she stopped to grab some food, turned the truck off, returned to the truck and it wouldn't let her in, it wouldn't unlock, it wouldn't do anything. The 12 volt battery had become so low that it was dead. And because this is an F-150 Lightning as opposed to a Mustang Mark E, which has no physical keys, the F-150 Lightning still has a hidden uh, physical key that you can use to gain entry into the inside of the vehicle. And then to open this, it's normally electronically operated. If you go where the hood release mechanism would normally be in most vehicles, there is a little pull tab. If you pull that twice, it will unlatch this enough to let you lift it up. And because, as I mentioned earlier in the video, I am a real stickler for everyone carrying portable 12 volt jump cables and also um, a tire pump, we were able, me on the phone and my wife in person, to connect up the jump starter and get the truck to turn on. And of course, when it was turned on, the 12 volt DC to DC converter from the main traction battery pack kept the truck happy until she got back here. She stopped it, turned it off, and of course then it wouldn't turn back on, so we sent it off to the dealer. It turns out that this battery was so low a voltage that it was impossible to resurrect it. Um, I asked the dealership if I could keep this so we could make this video. I haven't had a chance to speak to Omu about it yet, but I want to reiterate that it was my fault not OMU's as far as I can tell. The other two OMU batteries we have, the lithium iron phosphate ones are doing just great. As I say, one is in storage and one is in the bolt and we've had no problems with that. But this one, I think, was damaged by the 12 volt battery management system in the truck. And I've spoken to other F-150 Lightning owners who've had premature 12 volt battery deaths. 
Now that that has been fixed with software, hopefully it won't be a problem further down the line, but it did mean that our review for this particular battery ended prematurely. After we got the battery back from the dealership, I did try connecting up a charger and the battery started to get very hot indeed, which tells me that internally the structure of this battery has, has met its maker and is no longer safe to be used. Obviously, being a sodium based battery, I can't just take this to a conventional battery recycling specialist. So I will be reaching out to OMU and asking them if they want it back to do like a post-mortem or if there are specific uh, disposal and recycling things that I can do to fix that. And of course, I will let you know in a future video what they say. So that's where the batteries are right now. It is unfortunate and frustrating that this battery died so quickly. I've also noticed a few strange quirks and features. Thank you very much, Charlie. Let me say that again. I've noticed a few strange quirks and features based on this truck's 12 volt system. And there have been a couple of occasions where I've got behind the wheel and the 12 volt battery has been in battery saver mode, which tells me that the 12 volt battery was again low. And I think what happened in those situations was that the truck had been on the charging station. I'd come outside, open the truck up, turned it on to check for a download or to do something inside the vehicle without unplugging it. Then I'd got out of the truck, locked it up and walked away and the 12 volt battery had not properly gone back to sleep or the system had not properly gone back to sleep and had slowly drained the battery. I haven't been able to reproduce this enough to say whether this is uh, a long term problem or not, but I have used the bug uh, submit fault feature that all Ford EVs have. If you press that, that center top touch part of the screen, it will allow you to submit a bug report. So I have submitted a bug report to Ford for that. But other than that, the new battery is doing well. It hasn't given me any issues. And as Charlie just said, carry a 12 volt starter. Thanks for joining us today and if you've got thoughts make sure you leave them in our Discord chat room on our Patreon page down below or you can reach out to us on Mastodon or Blue Sky. Thanks to the amazing list of people scrolling by on your screen right now. They're part of the massive community of supporters who make this channel possible, helping us through Patreon and YouTube, covering our bills, paying our team and helping us to remain 100% independent. If you'd like to join them and see your name listed here, just follow the links below. We've got options available across a wide range of different price points starting from $1.50 US a month. A massive welcome to our newest supporters. Roshi Lu, Lynn Mogren, Yalafli, Abigail, Jason Hellman, Mike, Rastas, Jay, Jim Boyer, Trebor, Steffel HB, Calvin Klein, Albedardo Conessa, John Snyder, Scott Matheson, Mia Hartman, Philip Paul, Randolph Lee, Simon Cottell, Stephen Meadows, BGB Thauben, Kristen Ramerson, James Holyroad, Robin Holston, MK Duffer, S.A. Gimpson, Chip Chandler, Jeff Harrop, Nye Mister, Robert Betancourt, Jason Broder, Byron Newton, and Mark. To join the list and get your shout out, become a pay to Patreon member for your moment of fame, and you can even gift membership to someone else. If you'd like to support us with a one-off donation, you'll also find links below to make Kofi and Bitcoin donations. And we even have an old fashioned PO box you can reach us at for the time being, address listed below. You'll also find links to our swag store. And if you are someone who has to shop on Amazon, please consider using our affiliate link so we get the commission, not Jeff Bezos. So we can continue to focus on making our content even better and reduce burnout. We're a little freer with our release days this year, but plan on dropping new content every Tuesday, Thursday, and Saturday on the main channel, plus something on Sunday over on Transport Evolve Take Two. If you want more, the algorithm that hates us thinks you should be watching this video, but this one is one we think you should check out. Be awesome, be kind, be intentional, and don't forget to resist. Keep evolving.